Allison, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm just going to adjust my zoom here. So you're at the top and I'm looking at you as opposed to the bottom of my screen. Um, great to see you. You as well. Happy, uh, happy Thursday. It sounds like you've already had a busy day. Uh, I have lots of back-to-back -back meetings, but <laughs> <laughs> we're all becoming zoom zombies at this point. So <laughs> I know, right. Um, well, Hey, I think it'd be great, uh, to give folks a little bit of your background, um, and maybe just for context, you know, I, I was lucky to meet Allison many, many years ago. We actually met, I think we met over Twitter, right? You picked me on, on, on DM or maybe yeah. somehow we got connected. Um, but it was a long time ago. It was when you were at Uber and met up back then. And then, well, anyways, you tell people about it, <laughs> but it's been, we, we, we connect on a lot of topics, startups, investing, and lots of fun stuff. So tell people a little bit about your background. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm currently the COO and co-founder at Fast, um, which I joined about a year and a half ago, and we're building one-click checkout for the internet. Um, prior to Fast, I was uh, at Uber for five years, mostly working on payments and financial services. Um, so I started in our ops team there in Chicago, where I was working with drivers um, and really helping manage um, all the existing drivers in the market. So at that time, Uber had quickly scaled to 70 or 90 countries, and we had local ops teams that really did all the on-the-ground management. Um, so I got really incredible experience um, in all sorts of areas, um, but it was also very hands-on. So when I first started, we like we had this driver support center that was basically like a DMV in every city, and I would work there like two days a week um, helping drivers one-on-one -on -one from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and it was like really intense, um, but learned a lot and really understood like the impact uber was having um on the economy like the local economy especially because before that i was a management consultant and we're in business casual clothes and, and flying to work at big health insurance companies and then here i was like helping these people who may not have otherwise been able to get jobs like really get paid and uh be able at, and at the time it was really the only income opportunity where you can download an app and as long as you meet the basic requirements you could earn money. So it was um, really magical to be able to, to be part of that and see the impact that we were having. Um, but through that experience, I realized that payments was, uh, I thought it was one of the most important parts of the whole experience because um, drivers were driving to get paid and make money. And if there was an issue with their payment, um, it was like pretty emotional and could be catastrophic for them if they were expecting a certain amount or if it didn't come in on time or something like that. So um, I ended up moving to San Francisco to work on our driver payments team. Um, mostly focused on, on product strategy and then uh, large scale product rollouts um, and launches. So got a lot of global experience. Awesome. What years were you at Uber again? Uh, fall of 2014 to 2019. Amazing. Amazing. And, and so then you uh, tell us about fast. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as Jeff mentioned, we met I think it was 2017. I was like trying to figure it out, but Jeff was actually the first VC I ever met. Uh, we met on Twitter because um, I would, I had always been into like public stock investing um, and had gotten into Twitter and like was more tracking startups. And Jeff thought what, what I was writing was interesting. So we chatted and um, I was like, I don't know anything about venture, but I love like following startups and trying to find interesting things. So um, yeah, we had to chat and you recommended I write an investment thesis, which ended up being a document called Frictionless Finance um, around ways to reduce friction in, in payment flows um, to add business value. And I did a bunch of research on different areas and, and one of them was actually checkout. Um, yep. So after that, I met with lots of investors and um, wanted to go into venture capital. <coughs> um, it ended up not working out, but I started angel investing, um, which was super fun because I was at this like 25,000 person company. And then I was would get to meet with like two person teams uh, with a deck and try to like, pattern match or figure out if like, like what the, what the indicators were that it could be something big. So it was um, really, really fun, but I ended up meeting Dom, my co-founder as a potential angel investor. And he was, uh, he built a, a prototype for one click login um, and wanted to build checkout. And he was basically building my investment thesis in real life. And um, he had just come from Australia and didn't know a lot of people. So I ended up introducing him to, to index ventures. And then he, he convinced me to join the company. So yeah, it's been a fun and wild ride since then. And what I love, one thing I love about that is, you know, I, I meet so many people who say, oh, I have this great idea and I'm not sure where to go next. And I'm like, put it out there. Like there's never been a better time for people to kind of put out things that they're thinking about, content, ideas. 
And it's amazing how many good things happen because of that. Right. And, and so you connecting with Dom and, and I, I remember that first conversation we had, I'm like, Allison, you, you have an insight that most people don't have because you were seeing kind of the intersection of this new economy around mobile apps and drivers and labor and payments and FinTech in, I mean, there was not that many people who were seeing that when you were seeing it, it's uh, it was, it was super powerful. Um, and then the, the, you know, and then you tweeted out a couple of days ago, uh, I've learned more in the past 1.5 years running a startup than I did in my previous 10 years of my career. Highly recommend. This is on April 9th, Allison Bar Allen at 6, 11 a.m. So that, I love that um, because, you know, I meet so many people who are coming out of college and ask me for career advice. And I'm always like, well, I'm not great at career, giving career advice because I, I, I kind of like you, I did consulting for a couple of years and then I started my own company and then I started another company. And so it was like this series of startups, but I learned so much through that experience, it's so powerful to be handed so much responsibility and just have to learn. It's stressful, but you learn so much. So I'd just love to drill in on that a little bit. And then I want to come back to FAST and all the amazing things you guys are doing, because you and Dom are a total powerhouse duo, and I love what you guys are doing. And But just talk a little about that tweet, what prompted it, and, and maybe some of the things you have learned over the last couple of years. Yeah, it's been, I think like each part of my career has been very um, progressive. And I think, as you said, it's like important to put ideas out there and raise your hand. And I think cold outreach is another thing that's really important and not being willing. When I was like trying to get into venture, I would email like everyone and try to get meetings and um, luckily got a lot, but it's like, you really have to raise your hand because people are often not going to come to you. And often um, you need to raise your hand and say why you're the best person to do it or, or what you're seeing yep. is different and really sell your story and, and your vision about what you have. Um, as far as the tweet, I think it, it's been really interesting for me. Cause I, I was like an accidental founder. I was, I was not, it was not like my vision to become a like founder. It's not like something I dreamed about. A lot of I, us are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted, I wanted to invest. And, um, I was like, had been grinding for five years, like deeply at Uber. I'm like, I'm done doing that. I, I want to like just invest and like really sort of pick out the, the next generation of companies. But how it happened was Dom and I had like very complimentary skill sets because he was a very like uh, he was a serial entrepreneur in Australia and had multiple companies. And he's like very he's incredibly smart and um, he catches on things very, very quickly and, and sees things in a different way than, than most other people. And like I've met tons of founders. I don't know if there was anyone else I would consider like partnering with. So we just clicked right away. And then I had like just so much operational experience at Uber um, and, and saw what it was like to build like a really big company. I, I wasn't in executive Uber, but I, I was there and I know how the teams are structured and I know how sort of it operated behind the scenes um, and also had a really big network, which I didn't realize at the time, I think how valuable that was. But um, so when I started, I, I didn't really know like how it was going to go or what was going to happen. I probably wouldn't be the person that <laughs> what you your would job like. description was as co-founder. Yeah. <laughs> I probably didn't know like what, um, like if you were to interview for a COO, like you probably not, like would not have picked me. I don't know. It wasn't like on paper, I was like the most qualified person, but um, we just like figured it out. And like, we met with lots of investors and utilized my investor network to, to raise capital, um, to resource and then started hiring. And I think the main thing I've learned as like a founder and like building the company, I think is, I, I wrote about this recently as well as like sales and storytelling. Um, Cause <laughs> Over the past year and a half, true. like Dom and I have pitched the company, I joke, but like over 10,000 times, probably it's like, you're telling the vision and the story and why you're the most qualified people and like the short and long-term vision of how it's going to be over and over and over again. Um, and it's really sales. It's like getting people to trust you and 100%. believe in you. And it's, it's not just for investors. Like we would joke that raising capital is the easy part. Like then it's hiring. And I think- yeah especially now a lot of founders like underestimate how hard that's going to be. It's like, you may have a couple million dollars, but no one's heard of your company. Um, they're working for, they're working for huge. You don't have a product live. They're working for massive companies making massive amounts of money. And you're, you're trying to tell them to come and like build this thing from scratch, um, which is a lot of work. Also, a lot of engineers have not necessarily built things from scratch before. A lot of them are when it's a certain size, they're building on what's previously been there. So you also have to like be able to find the right people to do that. So, I mean, hiring engineers and hiring like the initial team and then sort of the traction grows as you get more and more people. But, um, and then it's sort of like a summer, I was able to hire quite a few people I previously worked with. And then it sort of like snowballs as well, but 
it's like a an, an never ending thing of like, you pitch it to investors, you pitch it to potential partners, you pitch it to employees, like existing employees and potential employees. So um, yeah, it's talking about the, the vision um, and story over and over again. And then you actually have to be able to execute on that as well. But um, it's like really important to, I think, be passionate about what you're working on because you'll almost never stop talking about it. So totally. if you're not passionate about it, it's, it's not going to be very fun for you. And I think that concept is so powerful because the reality is you're creating something out of nothing, right? You know, your vision, Dom's vision, you're, you're, you're trying to get people to buy into something they can't see. That's the unique element of being a founder is you see something that other people don't and you have to get them to come along on the journey. I remember I was speaking with a founder a long time ago, probably 10 years ago, he was thinking about starting a company and he was like, I don't even know where to get started. And I said, look, if you build the bus, people will get on it, but you have to drive, literally drive up to them with a bus, a metaphorical bus and say, get on, here's where we're going because yeah. they don't see it. They don't see what you see, or they'd be doing something on their own. And, and most people just aren't, don't have that DNA. So it's, it's such a powerful lesson. People always think of it from a fundraising standpoint, but the reality is company building is all about the journey, telling that story, getting people on board, reinforcing the mission and the vision and the goals and objectives. And you, you, the two of you do it really well. I mean, I think you know that, but like exceptionally well, but uh, it's a, it's such a amazing insight. And you're right. You don't really have to do that at larger companies. People are like, yeah, I have to go in and ask for budget. It's like, yeah, but the budget's there, right? On an existing yeah, product, right. an existing company. So it's just a different muscle. Yeah. And it's like, I think a lot of like what I do is evangelizing the company to um, people outside and like Twitter all happened like organically. It's become a very sort of impactful communication for me method for us. And I think some companies try to like copy what we've done or it, it just doesn't feel as authentic. Cause like for us, it was sort of this natural thing. It's like, I had like a decent Twitter following at the time. So when I announced I was going to fast, like some people started noticing and then Dom's really good at Twitter too. And then we were able to like hire really good people that help with content and video and other stuff. And it's like sort of this organic thing, but it is like a incredible way to like build our brand. And it sort of becomes a marketing and additional sort of a channel that we can talk about ourselves in like an authentic way. And that's sort of why I've loved Twitter from the beginning. Cause um, it was like the only way that you could get like direct insight from like really smart people. I think mm -hmm. it's like Elon is probably writing his own tweets. It's not like he has some like comms PR person writing them. Yeah, it's sort of amazing. any other communication channel, whether it's like LinkedIn or, or whatever else, it's like not directly coming from their mouth. It's coming from like, I don't know, you don't know where there's ghostwriters or, or wherever else, but it's, it's always been sort of this like authentic thing. And most people are who they are behind their accounts. Um, so it's sort of a way to get insights um, that you really can't get anywhere else um, on the internet. And what advice would you have? I love the story of like, I didn't really set out to become a co-founder. I sort of happened into it, but like there was a series of events that triggered that. I think there are a lot of folks out there that would love to be, you know, a co-founder or a founder and don't quite, you know, they don't have, they, I, you hear from a lot of people like, well, I don't have an idea. And it's like, well, there's ideas all around you, but what advice would you have for folks to kind of create that? It's obviously, it's a little bit hard in a pandemic to sort of serendipitously meet people, but what advice would you have for folks and ways to connect into the community and, and maybe get that opportunity? Yeah, good question. I know there's like, I think with COVID, there's been more opportunities for people to engage with online groups and it opens up access a bit. I know On Deck has done quite a bit and there's other groups. I think there still are better ways, I think, to connect um, sort of high potential people with, with companies or the right founders. Um, but as I said, I think talent is one of the most important things and also maybe one of the most underinvested in um, or thinking strategically about from the beginning. But um, as far as like, if you want to start a company, I think most founders I've met, it's like, you really need to, there's a couple like aspects to go around and either you have built up tons of operational experience. Um, and I don't think I could have done this job if I'd just been out of college. Like I just wouldn't have the playbook or, and not like I'm going to do things exactly as I've seen it before, but I know how it all operates behind the scenes in, in most areas, um, at, at some capacity. And like, if I would not have been able to go from PwC to starting a company, I just like would be totally lost. Um, so I think it, it does it, like 
what I recommend, especially for early career people is just join a company. It doesn't matter what position you are. Join a, same advice series I a, join a series A or series B company that has top investors joining like a support role. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. You just need to be there and be part of it and learn how it operates. Um, and I think I give the same advice. Yeah. Because yeah. once you've seen it, like then, then you can say, okay, I've seen it done this way. I've seen what works. I see what doesn't work then you have a playbook that you can expand upon if you want to do it your own way. But I, I like for me, I wouldn't have been able to like do it from scratch if I didn't have that experience. I know like some funds may provide like more of that operational support, but um, I think it really, really helped me to have that experience um, and just learn. Um, and like sometimes people overemphasize titles or whatever, but it's just like find that right company and just work and like show that you can get promoted or like learn, um, and get experience. Um, and then you can start your own thing. I think starting your own thing, it's like one thing I look for in companies, especially ones I invest in is like, are you solving a really big problem? Cause especially today, like the expectation is that like, you don't want to start a company if you don't think you can build a really big company. If you're going to get venture, if you're going to get venture funding, like the expectation is it's like investors are like looking for $10 billion plus companies and they're coming at it with that lens. So it's like, it's not like you're signing up to do a test. It's like you're convincing them that you can build this like massive company. So it's like, one, is it like a big enough problem? Um, and like, I think to build a really big company, you need to be solving a big problem because a lot of people are going to have to like use your service or pay for it or whatever. Um, and then it's like, are you the right person that can build this company? Can you convince all these people to help you um, to execute on this vision? Can you inspire people with the vision that you're pitching? Will they understand the problem you're solving? Because like, you may be able to convince a couple investors, but if you can, can't convince people to work with you because they don't think the problem's like big enough, then <clears throat> you're not going to be able to build a big company. So um yeah, that's like in a lot of founders I found too, it's like they may have some problem in their life that they tried over and over to like find solutions for and they weren't able to find the right company to help or like the right solution. So they get to a point that it's like, man, I just have to do it myself because like nothing is out there that meets my needs. And like generally those people are very, very motivated by actually solving the problem, not by building the business. Um, I think if people are just motivated by the money and building the business, like that's also not a way, good way yeah. to go about it. Um, you really want to find something that like you're passionate about and like you have a lot of conviction that you're the right person to solve that problem. I love the advice <laughs> of going to work with, uh, you know, I meet people coming out of college and I say, go work with great people working on a big problem. You know, think about if you were early and obviously if you were early at Facebook, it's been amazing. But if you were early at Uber, you were early at Stripe or you were early at DoorDash, or, I mean, you have learned so much from these founders, the management team, they end up bringing in great people you can learn from, not to mention the opportunities that open up. If you if you do figure things out and, and are successful, you can get promoted, you can take on responsibility. It's just um, it's one of the beautiful things about Silicon Valley. And I, I always give that advice like. You'll learn more in 12, 24 months working with a high growth startup than you will in three years at a, at a Fortune 1000 company and, um, and then have that DNA to go potentially do it yourself. Well, then that becomes like also your brand and your network and your like when people are looking at resumes too, they're often looking at where you got experience um, yep. and that becomes sort of much more important than wherever you went to school um, when like in the recruiting and yes, we're doing things like a lot of companies are doing things to like expand the pipeline um, of like people that they hire from, but I think it still um, is like a, an important way, <clears throat> um, yeah, to to grow and learn. So let's talk a little about fast. I know, like you said, you're passionate about it. You you and Dom are incredible at pitching the story. Tell tell folks a little bit about what you're building and why you're building it, and and then I'll ask a couple of more questions about like what some of the challenges have been so far and sort of where you guys want to go over the next year or two. Sure. Um, yeah, so we're building one click checkout for the internet, uh, similar to, to Amazon one click pay. Um, but really the problem that we're solving is an identity problem. So, uh, right now, every single tab on your Chrome web browser, you have to log in, um, and verify yourself over and over again. And every business that you interact with generally has a separate set of your data that they're stored. So if you get a new credit card or you get a new, um, address, you have to go in, log in and then update all of these forms. Um, so 
it's really about reducing friction between consumers and businesses or between businesses and businesses to do business together. Um, and I often give like an Uber example because uh, for, for the identity side and there's other components, but we have a whole driver onboarding team and what they do is collect documents and verify that drivers are who they say they are, that they pass background checks, that they their insurance is valid, their driver's license, everything. And uh, it's a very complicated process um, and then they need to make sure it's up to date. Then if a driver is approved on Uber, then if they go to Lyft or DoorDash or Instacart, they're going to have to upload the same documents over again. And those companies are going to have to build the same technology to accept documents. And, and this is an identity problem. So it's like, how do you make it, how do you make it easier for people to engage? Um, and lots of companies have tried to build data wallets before. I think checkout is this sort of perfect um, way for us to um, sort of build this network um, because it's a use case that people they're like checking out to fulfill a, a need they have to buy something. And still today you have to enter this information over and over again. So um, yeah, that's the, the main problem we're solving on um, and how it helps businesses is uh, we've shown to significantly increase conversion um, on websites from 65% up to like 165% um, because we're on product pages um, and you can just go to the product you like directly from an ad or whatever else and, and buy it right there as opposed to adding it to the card and then creating a username and going so through painful. Like five, I think everybody who's ever shopped outside of meals. Amazon, anybody who's shopped outside of Amazon can describe this problem. Like it's so painful when you go to a site and it's like enter your credit card and then you have to go back and you know, then there's some glitch in the site and blah, blah, blah. And it's like five minutes later, you just abandon the cart and go do something else. Yeah. And it's like right now we're asking almost every business, it doesn't matter how big you are, what you're selling to like build their own payments and identity and checkout flows. Um, and there's some like pre-built forms on platforms yeah. or whatever, but it's, there's still a lot of sort of behind the scenes work and it's not really what stores or the retailers want to focus on. They want to focus on their core business. They want to focus on the products. They want to focus on fulfillment and these other things. So, um, but checkout does become you look at the data and if you experience it it does become a blocker like people will often not buy things because they're on their phone and then there's this like long web thing and they're just like i'm not going to go through this hassle um and people love amazon and why do they love amazon because you get two-day shipping but amazon knows who you are they they have 100%. your info and like that's not going to be the first thing people say when they say they love amazon but i think it's an underappreciated um value proposition so we're about like how can we help uh, businesses grow and improve their, their online experience, um, with similar tools that Amazon does, but within their own sort of ecosystem and environment. And what have been some of the hardest, you know, we talked about your journey to, to becoming a co-founder. What have been some of the hardest things you guys have had to deal with over the last year and a half? Maybe just share insights from the, cause you know, we all see the, yeah. Tech crunch articles and all the glory of, oh yeah, being a founder yeah. is great, but like, there's a lot of it that's not great and it's hard. Just can you talk about some of the challenges? I don't know what comes to mind, but just some of the things you guys have struggled with over the last year, maybe. Yeah. I think like the first six to nine months, we were really building the products. Like we had to figure out how we were going to build it, what our go-to-market was. And we ended up uh, launching first on big commerce, but um yeah, uh, which has been a great partner for us. But um, yeah, figuring all that out, like, how are we going to do this? And it's like, again, as I said, it's like not only recruiting engineers, but building the entire engineering infrastructure from scratch. Like, yeah. how do you deploy? How do you set up your infrastructure? Like, how do you set up all these like platforms and systems that just don't exist yet? Like that takes time and thought. And like, even people who've worked at companies haven't often built from scratch like that before. So it's, um, a learning process. So yeah, we did a big launch last September, which, um, I mean, the team was like grinding for the last, like, especially 60 days on that. Like it was pretty intense. We were doing like at least daily standups or twice. And in terms of employees, like where were you guys a year ago? Where are you today? Like that, that's a big part of the equation too, is just hiring, right? Yeah. We were probably, I guess like 15 or 20 a year ago. Um, it, Cause we'd raised a $20 million um, series a. So, um, and then the team size was like sort of steady through launch. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many we had. I don't know. We may have had like 30 or so by the time we launched or maybe a bit more. Maybe yeah. 40. Um, uh, about 160. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So we launched and it's like, it's like you can build all this stuff and we were launching all these products for the first time. It's like, we have, it's, I mean, it's a, 
checkout button, but we're actually integrated with the order management system, which is a whole thing. We built a seller dashboard, we built a buyer dashboard, we built a big commerce app. So there were like multiple products that you're using for the first time. Um, and it's like, you don't know how quickly it'll be adopted. There's like just so many unknowns. So you just sort of have to do it and see what happens. And it's like, not all going to be perfect. Yeah. Um, but after our launch, we got a lot of like inbound and interest because we did like a, a sort of production of it and um, ended up raising a, a large uh, series B after that. So with that, we've been able to like continue building and investing in the team um, and, and growing. Yeah. And is hiring and team, is that is that one of the biggest challenges, just putting all that infrastructure together to onboard people? And I don't know if you guys are doing performance reviews and comp. I mean, is that... So do you spend time on that or does Dom or do you, have you hired people to, to handle that? Or how do you guys deal with all the people and culture topics? Yeah. Um, good question. It's like, again, it, so much is about recruiting. I spend probably now, I probably spend 25 to 50% of my time with the people team. Um, we just went through our first like performance review process that we're working on. So it was like figuring out how we do that for the first time as a company. I spend a lot of time thinking through where we're hiring from, how we're hiring, headcount planning, like how many roles we should fill. There's a lot of sort of financial planning that goes into it as well. Making yeah. sure, um, yeah, we have lots of people think through what our interview process is. Um, so yeah, it's, and it's like a really important part of the business um, that, yeah, I spend a lot of time on because I think it's just so important to uh, the output that you have as a company. Um, yeah. Yeah. And as you, as you think about the next year or two, where do you think the company goes? What do you want to accomplish and then what's sort of like your, I don't know, <laughs> your 10 year vision, you know, where, where is fast in five years or 10 years? Yeah. Good question. Um, I think, yeah, in a year, I mean, we're very focused on, on like we've been building the core platform for the past six to nine months. And now it's really about improve, continuing to improve on it and, and scale the platform um, and the product to have more people experience it. Cause it is a very like magical product. Um, we also uh, invest significantly in, in sales and go to market and thinking through how you, because we are B2B to C, so you have to convince sellers to integrate with you um, in different ways. So we spend a lot of time thinking about go to market and distribution. So it's sort of all these pieces need to work like perfectly in parallel to have uh, the magic happen. But um, yeah, that's sort of what Dom and I do is, is think through the bigger picture and envision. Uh, we spend a lot of time talking to potential partners too. And we're very lucky to, um, have a lot of great people who are interested in working with us and, um, uh, yeah, lots of big companies. So it's been fun. I think, yeah, really the next, especially six months and nine months are continuing to grow and have more people experience the product and, and help more businesses, um, through, through better payment solutions and, um, getting more people to experience it. And then we have like a lot of other products that we want to build, go into, whether it's post purchase experience, <coughs> Um, and making it easier to do returns and refunds and, and tracking of, of your deliveries. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff around product discovery and personalization as well that just hasn't really been done before. And then uh, financial services and thinking about um, different financial services that we can build on top of um, the core checkout um, product in different ways. Um, I mean, financial services is, is changing so much, even in the past yep. six months, how it's changed with crypto and, and everything else. But there's just still so much opportunity there to um, make better financial services experiences. And in my daily life, I just still have so many that are broken where it's like they'll mail you checks, we all do. Yeah. get you like send you $10 bills in the mail. I'm just, I'm like, this is just terrible. Like these businesses don't understand that they'll get paid a lot faster if it's a, if it's easier to do, but we'll get there. So it's, it's a massive market and e-commerce is sort of only beginning. And, um, you guys invest a lot in China and Southeast Asia, but it's like, there's all these business models there that like the U S has barely scratched the surface on sort of what you can do with yeah. social commerce and a lot of these different payment methods. Yeah. And, and so, um, is kind of the dream you guys build a great company and go public and, Right off yeah, the I think that's or, the goal. It's like that's. Do you that's, even have time to think about that, or you know? Or <laughs> I mean, from the beginning, it was like we were in this to build a company, not it wasn't like a, a test. It was like we want to yeah. build a really big and daring company, and I think that's important to have that mindset from the beginning. You don't want to. It's 
yeah, it's like, we want the company to be public. We, like most of the companies we're competing with are worth over a hundred billion dollars. Like this is a massive, massive yeah. market. Yeah. Um, and I think we really assembled an incredible team um, to, to execute on, on a big vision. Yeah, my simple advice to people who are investing in the public markets in this area is own Square, own Adyen, own PayPal. Like if, if you don't believe that more is moving towards digital payments and over the next decade, I, I can't help you. <laughs> like it's just, it's so the data, obvious. The data is just crazy. Yeah. Too. yeah. Well, hey, this has been great, Allison. I love it. I'm so happy for you, for all the success and for you and Dom. It's been amazing to watch you guys build this company and you know, having known you back from the Uber days and, and uh, it's just been fun. It's really fun. I'm really happy for you. And uh, thanks for taking the time. I know people will love this. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right. Have a good rest of the day. Bye.